Hi, welcome. This is compiling a virtual recording for a band, chorus, orchestra in the time of COVID. This presentation was originally given on August 18th for the New York State School Band Directors Association virtual conference and is being re-recorded so that it can be posted online. So let's begin. I thought I'd begin with how I got started with doing virtual recordings. I've had multi-track recordings that I've used GarageBand. I've also used an app on my iPad and I played duets with myself. Melissa and I decided we would record some elementary band pieces. We also um, thought, hey, let's, let's push ourselves. Let's see if I can do all of the woodwind parts and if she can do all of the brass parts. And we did the Granger Irish tune. Uh, the band pieces that we did were pieces she was working on in um, the spring of 2020 during the closure. And a couple pieces she really had she liked were from Your Score Music and Brian Franco. His um, YouTube channel is linked at the end of this presentation. He's done some amazing things, so please check him out. Support Your Score Music. Um, here's just a quick little snippet of the audio from the Irish tune. So, virtual recordings. I had four questions that I posed to myself as I prepared this presentation. Why would I want to do this? How do I select music for virtual performance? What other materials, or really, what materials do I need? And how long does it take to compile one of these recordings? So let's jump in. Why? Well, I thought that this was a great way to hear individual student work. Students are submitting individual recordings. I listened to each of those recordings uh, partially to see how they did, partially to make sure that if I'm posting the recording that there weren't any snafus in the recording, any audio, um, vocal audio in terms of the student talking under their playing. Um, but really this is just a great way to hear individual students' progress and was throughout the spring of 2020 for me. It highlights student achievement, and along with that, it motivates students to practice. I mean, if you think about it, students knowing that their work is getting put together with others, they're going to try to submit the best work possible. A reason to do this could be for an award ceremony. It could also be for a year-end, mid-year keepsake. Um, I think one reason not to do this is because an administrator says, why don't you just create a virtual ensemble? Because we all know that this is not an ensemble per se, and that the skills that students have to have individually are not always the same as the skills that they have to have in the ensemble setting. They're not adjusting to the people around them. They're not adjusting to the conductor. They're playing their part in time. So how did I select music that I've done? I really don't think that the process is any different for selecting virtually than it is for your traditional ensemble. The same considerations that you would use to pick a piece of music in real time are the considerations you're going to use for your virtual ensemble. You have to give consideration to percussion equipment that students have access to at home um, for band recordings or full orchestra recordings, or allow for some creativity. I had students use pan lids to mimic cymbals. I had a student use a glass bottle and a wooden spoon to emulate a triangle. We've used apps that we've downloaded for our um, fun little sounds for cymbal rolls. Uh, and in the digital audio software, you can also use the sounds that are there to help augment an ensemble as needed. 
I like to think about how technical passages will line up. I've really had a lot of success with slower pieces, uh, although there's their own consideration there with all the rubato that can that often occur in a slower piece. But if a woodwind section has strings of 16th notes, if they're not executed really cleanly, they might sound muddy in a virtual recording. What materials do I need? You need digital audio software, probably on your computer. Uh, during the presentation, it, it was asked if an iPad will work. For some audio mixing, yes, but it probably doesn't have the full processing power that a, a desktop or a laptop will have. Logic is an Apple audio software. It supports 1,000 audio tracks, and Apple is still offering a 90-day free trial with this piece of software. GarageBand comes free with Mac computers and iPads, but there's a limit of 32 tracks maximum. Audacity is free, but through the research I've done, the number of tracks is hardware dependent. So faster computers can run more tracks, slower computers will struggle or will start to have issues. Adobe Audition is part of the Creative Suite. So if you have the Creative Suite in your school district uh, because your art colleagues have Photoshop or Illustrator, perhaps you have Adobe Audition and can check with that. So there's some, not all, of the digital audio software. Obviously, I didn't put Pro Tools on this list. Um, I was asked about Soundtrap. That's not something I have used. Um, so. I'm just trying to show you that there's some professional software out there, there's some mid-range software, and there's some free software, really depending on what you have access to. Digital video editing software, you have, again, iMovie, which is free. It comes with um, Mac computers and iPads again. It can do picture-in-picture, -picture, but Every time you need to do a picture in picture, you have to export the video and then re-import it. So if you had 16 uh, video files that you wanted a picture in picture, you would have to place them, export it, and repeat that process 15 times before you were able to see all 16 videos. Final Cut Pro is Apple's professional level software. And again, as with Logic, it is currently offering it as a 90-day free trial. And Adobe Premiere, again, part of the Creative Suite. I'd like to just mention at this time that if you were to purchase Logic and Final Cut Pro separately from Apple, Logic is $199, Final Cut Pro is $299. But if you search their education store, there's actually an education bundle that you get both pieces of software plus um, compressor and main stage all for $199. So the education bundle is really a good deal because if you're buying Logic, you get Final Cut Pro for free basically, plus the other two pieces of software. Additional materials that you need in order to do this, or really that your students need to do this, you need to provide them with a click track. That could just be a metronome setting, it could be a pre-recorded metronome that you send to them. It could be using smart music. You could create your own play along. Uh, you have the melody you're providing to your students with a click for them to play along to. Uh, what I've really found through this process is the more that there's a pitch center to reference, the easier this is. So it, it's really difficult for young players and even older players to just play to a click track uh, if they're not used to playing in tune by themselves. So I have done a lot of playing to a click track myself with a tuner. I've done a lot of playing to recordings to a click track to, just to try to improve my own skills, but that's something that students struggle with. So the more of a pitch center that you can provide to them, the better.
I know I've had colleagues that have recorded a piano accompaniment for choirs. That's a great way. There's the pitch center. Uh, you could probably do the same thing for a string quartet. But for band music, I, I really started using smart music. The click is built in, the audio recording is built in, and actually the on-screen music is built in. The other thing I kind of addressed a little while ago, you need a computer with enough hard drive space and processing power to manipulate the audio and the video files. As with Audacity, its number of audio tracks is dependent on the computer speed. The same thing is true when editing video. And the same thing is true actually with Logic. The more audio tracks that, that you add, the more the hard drive is running, the more the, the RAM on the computer is running. Specific materials that students need. They need a device to record audio and video. For the most part, the projects that I've done have really required two devices. Uh, because my students have Chromebooks, they had access to smart music. So they were using smart music, plugging their headphones into their Chromebook, and then they were using their phone in order to record their audio and their video. So older students, they can use their cell phone. Younger students, they may not have access to a cell phone. They could use an iPod. They could use a website such as Flipgrid, where they're recording right into the website and then sending it to you that way. You also need a way to manage your uploaded files and the shared files. Digital video files are large and really they're too big to email. I have used uh, my Google Drive, I've created a folder or I've used my Google Classroom with an assignment to the students and really I have a shared folder that all of the files go to that then I download to my computer so that I have them to manipulate them. Just because they're in, in a Google Drive, I can't work with them in Logic or in Final Cut Pro in Google. I download them to my hard drive. And as I said, these files are large. Some of the projects I've worked on have gotten to be 100 gig in size. So you really need enough storage in order to manipulate files. And as I said a couple of minutes ago, students need headphones. You don't want to hear the click or the play along recording that they're using in the final product. The final question I'd like to kind of jump into before I show you Logic and Final Cut Pro, how long does the process take? And unfortunately, I don't have an answer for you. It is so dependent on many things. It depends on your comfort around audio and video software. It depends on the length of the piece, again, the computer processing power, and actually the quality of the recordings sent by the students. Like I said, I listen to each student submission from beginning to end. So in a three minute piece with 30 students submitting, I'm listening to that. Plus then as I layer the recordings together, I'm listening to that. I'm listening as I finalize. Plus I'm waiting for the computer. Uh, I've posted many times online, run gerbils run because the computer processing power um, is just lagging with the number of tracks that I'm trying to deal with. So how do I do this? Here we go. We're going to jump into logic. The ironic thing before the closure in March of 2020 as a department at my high school, we were talking about creating uh, a mini recording studio for our students. And, and I would often say, I don't have time to learn logic. I don't have time to learn Pro Tools. Um, I'm just not comfortable doing this for our students. And then we closed and well, yes, I've learned logic. So I guess I bit my own self there with my comments before the closure. The first thing that you're going to do in Logic, and I've had several phone calls about this from colleagues, is the very first time that you ever open Logic, you need to open the preferences. On any piece of software on a Mac, 
you can open the preferences by typing, holding the command key and the comma key. You can also go up to the title in the main menu bar. It'll say logic and scroll down to preferences. Once you're in the preferences in logic, you want to go to advanced and then you want to enable the show advanced tools and then you want to enable all of the additional options. And if you notice down at the bottom of the window down here, there's an enable all that you can click. So advanced, show the advanced tools and then enable all. And you should only have to do this one time. So you're going to enable all of the preferences and I will show you why in a moment. We're going to create a new audio file. Again, you can do that by going up to file, new file, a new project it might be. And you can pick the tempo, the key signature, the time signature. These are the defaults at a tempo of 120, C major, 4-4. Four, four. You can leave it that way, or if you have a little bit more specifics for the piece that you're working on, you can edit this. Um, by editing this, it gives you a little grid later on that helps you line up measures a little bit, but it's not totally necessary. Okay, so you've got your project set up, you've changed your preferences, and the next thing that we're going to do is begin importing audio. So you have your files that your students sent you. They were probably were shared to a Google Drive or a server somewhere. You've downloaded those to your computer. And now you're going to drag and drop those into Logic. And the, every time that you import a file, it asks you, would you like to open the movie? Would you like to extract the audio? uncheck open the movie make sure extract audio is checked and that's going to allow you to manipulate the audio file so with our advanced preferences enabled video files import automatically as a locked file logic is saying hey I have this sound file I know it was attached to a video file I don't want you to be able to manipulate it so a locked file can't be moved and adjusted. So here are two locked files. There's a little lock next to the title of the track. Here are two unlocked files. The unlocked files I can drag and move across the grid. The locked files stay where they are. In order to manipulate the audio file, you must unlock it. So how do I do that? Again, several phone calls this past spring. To unlock it, you're going to control click or right click if you have a two button mouse on the audio track. Once you do that, it brings up a menu. You're going to go down to SMPTE lock. There's an arrow showing you there's a sub menu and you're going to unlock that audio track. So right click scroll down to SMPTE lock, go to unlock the position. Once that's unlocked, you are now able to adjust the audio. With each student submitting an audio file, their length before they start playing could be different. I know I've seen some people say, well, they could put a clap before they start. Sure, that's true, but you still then need to say, okay, once you clap, I need four beats before you hit start. Um, I, I, I like the way that I've done it. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. Um, I've tried the clap. It just it didn't work for me. So there will be empty space before their audio or their video begins, and you need to remove this. So you're going to drag the vertical cursor. Here's the vertical cursor. You could drag it to right before the audio wave appears, and you might need to zoom in in order to do this. In Logic, we're going to wind up splitting the audio. So if this track, this green track, were selected by me clicking on it, and I have the cursor where I want it, 
I could press Command T to trim. I could also take the edge of the audio track at the far left and drag it to where right before the audio waves begin. Again, I might need to zoom in in order to finally adjust this. So if you notice the purple track or the green track, the silence at the beginning has already been removed. And then the after, so once I trim it, I select this area here just by clicking on it and I press delete and then that track is trimmed. So each audio track that I import, I use the vertical cursor and sometimes this is the measure number. So again, if you set up your project correctly a few steps ago when I said it was not necessary, um, if you set your tempo correctly and your time signature correctly, the numbers here will help you estimate measure numbers. So in this project, I've got some instruments that begin kind of at the beginning, a couple more instruments that begin a measure, a couple measures later, a bunch that come in several measures later. So like I said, you may need to zoom in and out so you can actually see the audio waves. Adjust each track individually. Fine tune it so that you know where each person enters. And you may need to split a track in the middle because someone got off. If they're playing with just a click track, perhaps they didn't count the rest correctly. Um, perhaps they came in early. So I have known to do this after a long rest. I've also done this in the middle of a phrase to really line things up. If you look at this picture here versus the previous slide, you'll notice that these green tracks in the middle have some empty space now. I've started to remove the silence. I've removed the silence from this chunk of audio here. It helps to clean the audio. It helps prevent audio overload. It removes the white noise. Really what you're doing is you're starting to stack layers on top of one another. If these layers have white noise, it's going to amplify and multiply into your final recording. The, the fewer tracks that you can have playing, the purer your audio is going to be. Remember you're working with files that came from probably a cell phone or a computer with that built-in microphone. You're not working with studio recordings that were working with professional microphones. So in this instance, these four tracks here are the only things that are playing versus all of the white noise that could be playing. And then these four tracks come in, these four tracks go out, these seven tracks, these eight tracks here are playing, and now everybody's playing, but because they're playing, you're not getting the background noise that could be in there. You're also not having the computer work as hard when you take out the silence. Okay, so once you have everything placed, then it's time to listen and adjust and equalize, oh my, lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Here's another screen in Logic and it looks like a mixing board and that's because that's exactly what it is. Each track has its own mixer on the left hand side so you can adjust each individually. But what I like to do is once I have things placed is I just open the mixer by pressing X. My primarily, primary goal is to have the best sounding recording that I can. With the work that the students have submitted, how do I make this sound the best? I turn their levels down. By default, all of their levels wind up being up here at zero. If you notice, not one of these audio tracks in this screenshot is the slider up at that level. They're all, they've all been pulled down. 
So turn the levels down as you listen. You really don't want to see your um, indicator go into the yellow very much, and you definitely want to avoid the red. So green is good as this would be playing, or here's a better view as this would be playing. There's colors bouncing, and if I see yellow, I know that that slider, that person is performing too loud. Sometimes I have to adjust pitches. Sometimes certain phones record at a different pitch. And through the projects that I've done, I know consistently now that I'm having the same people send me recordings whose devices I need to pitch correct. Um, because as I'm listening to him, like this just doesn't sound right. So I can raise the entire pitch by putting in an audio effect. And in the instance that I can remember right now, I have to raise that person's pitch 18 cents and then it, it works out really well. It's not that they're playing out of tune. It's their device has recorded it at a different rate. Because again, I'm working with microphones that come from cell phones, I add in equalizers. I just use the default equalizers that are part of logic. I, I don't have any special formulas, but I'm adding equalizers to as many instruments as I can to try to clean and improve the sound. Sometimes I have to balance audio left and right or I want to make it sound like they were on the stage so I know that my tubas are in the center so I try to center my tuba sound. I know that my trombones are on my right so I'll move them to the right a little bit um, because again it's all about how does this sound making it sound the best. And at the end of my projects I tend to add a little reverb so that it feels like I'm playing in a stage and not a totally dry recording. One of the last steps that I do in Logic, um, because I've cut apart tracks, is I add fades. I fade in and fade out that helps keep the sound pure again um, in the final recording, because really I am splicing things together. Without fades, if you listen very carefully, you could hear a little pop as a track turns on or as, as an instrument leaves. So. Over on the left, there's a region, and then I just click and tell it I would like a five millisecond fade in, a five millisecond fade out, and then those audio recordings are a lot cleaner. Now I am ready to export my audio file. I'm done, I've listened, I'm happy the way it sounds, so I'm gonna export it. Logic calls it bounce, command B, or up under the file menu, you can tell it to bounce. The export window, because I know I'm gonna go into Final Cut Pro, I would like a PCM file. I also have told it I would like an MP4 file because I'd like to email the audio file to someone to say, hey, listen to this. Um, I would like it to start at measure one. The piece I was working on was 68 measures long. So it goes from the beginning to the end. When I am exporting for video, you would like the sample rate to be 48,000. Why? Because that's what the internet told me. The standard for CDs is for 44,100, which is an option in there, but the standard for digital video files is 48,000. So pick 48,000 from the pull down menu. And then Export your file, bounce your file, save it, and then you're ready to move on. So that was the process of editing the audio. Now we're really going to pull off our, our Saturday Night Live skills here, and we're going to wind up lip syncing our audio file back to our video file. It really is important to me that the audio file is the best that it can be. 
and then I like to just put it back to the video and I'll do the best that I can to line things back up, but it doesn't always work because if I've really manipulated the audio file uh, by splicing things apart, it doesn't always line back up with the way the video was recorded. So you're lip syncing. Okay, so we're gonna move on to Final Cut Pro. And in Final Cut Pro, the first thing you're gonna do is you wanna determine your final layout. Do you wanna use grids? How were your videos recorded? Did your students send you all of them landscape where their phone is on its side? Or did they send some to you in portrait mode? Or did you get a mix of, of files because someone didn't read the directions and you weren't sure? Landscape is the easiest way to work because you can easily create grids of, you could create a four by four grid, you could create a five by five grid, you can make landscape pictures more um, you can crop them in and make them more like a portrait it's harder to take the portrait the up and down and and do a lot of manipulation with that how many videos are you going to have at once what is visually appealing so before I begin to lay out a project I try to think in my head what's the final picture going to look like do I want it to just look like Zoom where everybody's on all at once? Do I want people to come in and out? And I, I really try to give a little thought to that before I start placing video tracks. Just a note here because you're going to see um, this in the coming slides. Did you know that some cameras reverse the picture image? It may be necessary to apply a filter to flip an image back. You're gonna see one of the French horn pictures here. Uh, it looks like they're playing their horn with their right hand because I just haven't added the filter to it yet. Okay, so just like we did in Logic, we're gonna import video. I like to import from who starts at the beginning of the piece. So I'm working with a score or I'm looking at the parts and for this project here, I know who came in in measure one. I know who came back in a little later, and I know where the entrances are. So begin importing the video and add the tracks as they enter from the beginning of the piece. It's important to note, each video will import at its full size. So if you look at this window here, Final Cut Pro has many things going on. The top left area is where your imported files live. The bottom third, approximately, is where your current workspace is. The center portion of the screen is your selected active file. So you can see that the selected file over here is showing me the audio or the the picture here and then on the right is the information about the selected file so there's a lot going on in this window okay so we're going to adjust video we've placed some on some video tracks we're placing them one at a time um, there's a question mark there because I I sometimes actually drag multiple tracks in at once um, the more that I've done this, I'm like, okay, here's who entered. Um, all the trombones are in, all the trumpets are in. I'm dragging all those tracks, and then I'll start to manipulate them. But just like we did with the audio, we ne need to begin to trim the video so that it begins with the master audio. So we are looking at the Vaughn Williams Flourish for Wind Band. The bottom track down here is the master audio file that we bounced out of Logic. I've added my conductor track above that. You'll notice that the conductor starts before the audio. So what I've done here is I've provided a prep. It looks like it would at a concert. The conductor's giving the prep, but then the sound begins. These three video tracks above all start at different times. So you can see with our French horn, 
that this is the amount of space before she started playing. So this was the lead in. Our trombone player had a lot more lead in. And then our other trombone player had a lot of lead in, but not as much as the track below. All of these lead ins need to be removed so that the wave from this audio, this audio, and this audio line up and lip sync back to our master audio file. So we begin to trim the audio so that the video lines up. So what does that look like in Final Cut Pro? These have now been trimmed. Again, I could do it just like I did in Logic. I can drag and line up. And then I've put the video file so that everything starts at the same time. I felt very happy with this trombone track. I felt very happy with this trombone track. I was probably off ever so slightly with this horn track because it looks like the audio actually started just a little bit later than where I have it. But that's the thing. In Logic, I'm able to work in measures and, and notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, like we're used to dealing in music. When I get to Final Cut Pro, I'm dealing with frames. And a frame is not necessarily edited like musical notation. So I got this as close as I could. Um, I'd also like to point out the yellow and the red. That's the audio that came from the original file. There's very little yellow and red in our final project. That's because of all the work that I did in Logic. So sometimes these come through a little hot. That's why we turned the levels down in Logic. Okay, so we're going to continue adding tracks. And we're going to resize tracks because right now there were four videos in that project. There was a French horn, two trombones, and a conductor. I trimmed off the space at the beginning, but our window right now is only showing the topmost video. It's only showing this trombone. Underneath that trombone is another trombone, a French horn, and a conductor. I have to select each track. Over in the inspector on the right, I need to change the size, the scale, from 100%. So I have to resize the videos. And once I've resized the videos, all four will appear up in the project window. So this is the way that I envisioned the beginning of this piece because they were the only three instruments playing with the conductor. I only wanted the four things on the screen. I continued to add video tracks as, as parts entered in the piece. So the next thing that enters is the trumpets. So I added the trumpet videos and then I added the woodwind videos and the percussion so I've added, I've trimmed down so that the start of the track that we're seeing is where their audio begins. And once all of the, fine, of the pro video is placed, then I begin the final layout. So measures one and two, well, depending on where my cursor clicks in the project, it depends on what I see in the screen. So this here, if I had my cursor here, we would see... The, the trumpets and the trombones. And then if we look where everybody's playing, we got that display there. So like I said, continue the process from the previous slide. There are several videos that we've added. Measures one and two, this is what we saw in the project. Measures three and four, if you see the video, this is what you'll see. Measure six and seven, this is what you'll see. Once all those videos placed, then I began that final layout. Just like I had to do in Logic in Final Cut Pro, I split the videos using the audio wave as a guide. Final Cut Pro calls it blading, and it's the blade tool. Um, I think iMovie might have called it split at playhead. Um, some, somebody might call it slice. It's all basically the same thing. So I use the blade tool. I slice apart the video. When people have extended rests, 
So if we take this trombone track, it's really still all one track, but at the end of the wave, I said, okay, this is where the trombone stops. Again, there's a little wave past it. It's just the way that it worked with um, musical units versus frames. Silence, 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 silence. This is where it starts again. So I hit the blade again. And then I turned off these clips because they were resting. These clips are on. As the project plays, you hear French horn and trombone. As the project continues to play, you hear trumpet. And then the trumpets take over the screen. And then the French horn and trombone come back and the trumpets get turned off. So I'm kind of just using, again, the audio file as my guide playing resting. And that's really how I've done this. So how did I get started doing this? Well, I told you at the beginning, I actually started recording duets with myself. I did this years ago with GarageBand. Uh, GarageBand changed. I didn't keep up with the changes. I'm like, okay, I'm kind of over GarageBand. Um, then we went out on the closure and I said, you know, I need something to do. So I started to record little ensembles with myself back on my iPad. We did the Irish tune. Use a metronome and play one part of a duet. Logic has a built-in metronome. You can plug in your headphones and record right into Logic. You can add another track and solo that next track and listen back to your first part and actually play duets with yourself. Create a new audio track, line up your audio, adjust and export it and share it with somebody. Um, learn, learn it little by little. Use the Rubank yellow duet book, nice and simple. Use duets in beginning band methods. Uh, you don't have to do something very difficult to get yourself rolling in this. Just get your feet wet. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. You can just do audio. You don't have to record audio and video. If you're ready to move past the audio, then yes, make a video with yourself. Use two devices, one device in which you can listen to a click track, one device in which you can record with. Import your audio file. Maybe make video separate and audio separate. Finalize your logic project. Export that. Import that into Final Cut Pro. Line your videos up. And really most importantly, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, Final Cut Pro is a strange little beast. It saves your work as you go along. It's like working in Google. If you've ever worked in a Google Doc, there is no saving. Logic, on the other hand, every time you, need, you make a change, you want to save. Um, you can undo in both programs. So it's okay. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. Some resources. We, I've talked about the Flourish for Wind Band. That video is on my YouTube channel. Uh, Band at Home is Brian Franco's from Your Score Music. His video there is masking. If you want to record a duet or a trio with yourself and make it look like you're sitting on your couch and just moving from position to position. I used a couple of books when I first started with this through Peach Pit Press. The Logic tutorial I went completely through. I really enjoyed that. The Final Cut Pro book um, I haven't finished yet. I'm still on chapter four because I just like, okay, I got this. I'm going. Uh, and I ha haven't stopped and had the time to go back and finish that tutorial. Uh, again, Logic is free for 90 days and Final Cut Pro is free for 90 days, both from Apple and 
there's my contact information. So I'm going to try to put those links in the description box as I post this video so that they're clickable and you don't have to retype them. But if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I hope this has been helpful. Um, again, this is a re-record from the Nisbeta virtual conference. I believe they're going to post the, the portion of the Zoom conference call that actually did record okay. So if you want to hear the question and answer portion of, of that presentation, check that video out. And thank you so much. Let me know if you have any questions. Good luck with your virtual recordings.